Welcome back to the channel everyone and if you're new here my name is Victor and today I'm back with another Adobe After Effects tutorial. Today we'll be covering a personal favorite music video of mine which is Run the Jewels's Legend Has It. The specific effect we're going to be doing is the melting wall effect but we're going to set up the entire scene just using a green screen and a stationary camera instead of one that actually moves. So I'll show you how to fake that movement as well as that melting effect. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is shoot your subject on a green screen. Now, if you wanna replicate the music video, you're gonna to want to pretend like someone's actually there, even though it's gonna be a duplicate of your subject. Now, bring that footage into After Effects and key out the green screen. And I'm not showing you how to do that in this tutorial, because I've covered that in another tutorial, and I've got a Skillshare class that you can check out in the link below. You can get a free month if you want to see a little more in depth on my green screen process. So now that the green screen is keyed out, we're going to throw in our background and if you need a suspect wall background, I created my own based on that music video. I put it together using a concrete photo and a ton of solids and text layers. It kind of took a while, but if you want one, I'm giving it away for free down below. There's a link. So add that background footage to your composition and make sure you place it on the bottom. And now you're going to scale and reposition it based on the size of the subjects. Make sure you're making it make sense. Now with the subject clips, let's go one by one and reposition and rescale them so it makes sense based on the background. And it's okay if one of your subjects isn't in frame at all because we'll be faking that movement and it will come into frame. Now you're gonna arrange them on the timeline for how long they're lasting. And keep in mind, your effect needs to end when that first subject clips comes to an end unless that subject is no longer in frame from the fake camera movement. All right, go to layer, new, null object, and then parent the subject clips to the null. Now from the beginning of the effect, turn on the position and scale keyframes on that null, and then move to the end of the effect, and then adjust the position and scale if you want to. That null is basically acting like our camera, so when you move it to the side, it's moving all of those characters over to the side. And I am choosing to scale a little bit in this shot, so that's why I didn't parent my background to that null object, because if you do parent that background, and you scale, then it looks super flat. It doesn't look like there's any depth between the subject and the background. But if you manually add that keyframe in to match what it should look like with a little bit of depth, it will kind of look like there is depth. But I didn't want my shot to be scaling the entire time, so I went to about the middle of the effect and then added a keyframe for the scale to make sure that it wasn't changing from the beginning to the middle, and then adjusted the position keyframes to match what it's done that far. And I did that for both the null and the background. All right, now double click on the background layer to open it up in the layer panel. Since we've done all the scaling to it, we're not gonna be able to do this effect unless we're in the layer panel, because it'll just show the entire thing. So now you're gonna search for an effect called liquify and add it to the background. So now you're just going to use that top left liquify Brush to make a bunch of lines down the height lines that are on the suspect wall and you can adjust the brush size and pressure to get a varied look throughout. Now from the very beginning of that effect you're going to turn on the keyframe stopwatch for the distortion percentage and change it to zero and then move to the end of the effect and then change it to 100% and now when you play it back over time you should see that those lines just start to melt down. All right now go back to your composition and the last step let's just add a drop shadow to our characters. And the key here is to make it subtle because we're trying to ground our subjects into the scene, make it look like they're actually there, you know, maybe casting a little bit of a shadow up against the wall, but we need it to be subtle. I increase the distance and softness a little bit and then change the direction to match the shadows that are on the subject's body. And then I lower down the opacity to something that's not too dark. And then that's it. That is how you set up that scene similar to Run the Jewels as Legend has it and then melt the wall afterwards. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something. If you did, leave me a thumbs up, comment what you thought down below, and then don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one.